Uganda, uh, and Uganda and Kenya, and regularly trains and conducts support for healthcare visitors and professionals in Central and Southern Africa, um, as well as consulting to the World Health Organization and many other organizations. He's the ex, sorry, I'm blatantly reading my notes here, the ex-medical director of um, the Margaret Pike Institute Center for the Study and Training in Family Planning, um, and is the consultant at the Churchill Hospital, Oxford. He's written many books. It says eight, I think there are more, of these many more editions. Um, and these include Contraception Today, Contraception, Your Answers, Your Questions Answered, and The Pill, The Facts. Um, and I shan't take up any more of his time, um, other than doing his magic trick again of summoning up the presentation and then transferring it to the superior mind and superior technology of the Thank you very much indeed. Um, and um, first, uh, it's great to be here, and although I'm currently in Oxford, I am a Jonian, ex Jonian, I'm in St. John's here in Cambridge. Uh, and, um, uh, my title is Population Matters, because despite what you've heard, a uh, suggestion that it may not matter that much now, and I know that uh, um, Fred Pierce is following me, uh, is going to say somewhat similar, I do think it still matters. It matters because we uh, have as many people as we have now, and it would have been a lot better if we had majored on family planning earlier, uh, and to have fewer now, and I still think it matters that we're going to get this huge increase of a further two or three thousand million before we stay much. Um, what else have I got here? You've already heard that I was born in Africa, so that's as relevant. Uh, and the interesting thing is that my decision to specialize in family planning, uh, to make sure I did gynecology and also get trained in surgery, began here in Cambridge when I was still a second year medic. And I attended a small meeting uh, in, uh, at St. John's Cambridge, uh, which was led by uh, a chap called Colin Bertram, who was a biologist. And I think you'll notice that my presentation today is very different from the other three, because I have a biological background. In fact, I uh, wouldn't even be a doctor, except that I had a fantastic biology teacher at school, and that really made me uh, take the specialty out. And after I heard that lecture from Colin Bertram, this biologist, I decided that, in a sense, we doctors have caused this mushrooming of human numbers, which I'm going to show you in a moment. And therefore, because we suddenly started being successful, doctors were useless for the first millennia until the middle of the 19th century. We actually thought it helped people to be bled and all that kind of thing. But then, in the middle of the 19th century, we started being, uh, we brought in public health with uh, Dr. John Snow and moving that handle on the pump uh, to stop the cholera epidemic in London. And we also, a hundred years later, invented antibiotics. And we then created a great big imbalance in this world of ours. Because people used to have to have about six kids or more, to have two to uh, reach maturity, and uh, that stopped happening. And as a consequence of that, if you look at this little display, this little uh, mini video, nothing much happens when you watch this for the first uh, 1800 years, and then it really takes off. And I do think doctors did a good thing. Death control is important. I wouldn't say it wasn't wonderful to become useful at last. But when, it, when we doctors didn't major quickly enough from voluntary family planning as, an, as a, a way of re, re, returning the situation to balance, you get this massive increase. You might like to look up your own date of birth yet. Yeah, not, not quite now, but when it comes out. And just see what's happened in your own lifetime, even you young people. Uh, we've had a thousand million <coughs> people in the last 12 years, which is all they were in 1800. And the problem is that every week at the time present, a city, one and a half million people, is built somewhere, not in one place, but somewhere in the world, every week a city. And every city has a footprint. And the footprint includes uh, a carbon footprint as you create uh, greenhouse gas. I totally agree with Ludi that uh, the poor people who are mostly in the city, the city is a city which is appearing mainly in the south, have much less consumption and pollution. They cause much less. No debate on that. But nevertheless, the only way out of poverty is to develop. And the only way to develop is to use more fossil fuel and to uh, and that have a bigger footprint. And if, as I hope all of us in the room, we really want to make poverty history, hands up anybody who doesn't in this world of ours, we want to make poverty history, it cannot but help 
to fewer poor people to be got out of poverty. I'll come back to that one day. Yet, it's totally true, we must all reduce our capacity consumption. And it is an unfair, unequal thing the way we, we over consume uh, in the rich north. A few quickies, uh, you know all about uh, the fact that the last 12 years, 10 of them have been the hottest since records began. And I just read that this very last year was the hottest in the world ever. Already, this last year. Uh, and it's connected with, with carbon dioxide. We can break that later if you're not sure about that. Uh, we're losing water, uh, we're losing ice in, the, in, in Greenland. This was the underwater uh, cabinet meeting that the Maldives held as a stunt about 18 months ago uh, with the Prime Minister over there and the Minister of Fisheries and Agriculture. Because they're going to drown as the, uh, as the islands uh, are swamped by, by uh, water. And it's not just going to happen in the Maldives. There's a real prospect of London looking like that. Uh, sometime in the next hundred years. And secondly, I, in some ways I'm more scared about peak oil. Some of you may have been reading about that from the point of view of maintenance of our civilization than I am about uh, climate change. It may, it may well hit us sooner when oil gets too expensive because we're so gluttonous with stuff. We so, uh, our whole uh, suburban living, way of living, depends on it. And we have used up 150 million years worth of <coughs> Conservate sunlight in the last 150 years. I mean, that is anathema, isn't it? To have done that. And then the third great dilemma uh, is the fact that we destroy habitats. That city that you saw with its footprint destroys habitats. It has to, both for the land it uses itself, but also for the agricultural <coughs> land around it, for the burned uh, trees and so on in the rainforest to, to feed it. And here's a statistic that really shattered me when I first heard it. Wild species on the side of us now comprise only 3% of vertebrate flesh on planet Earth. Imagine that. 97% of the flesh uh, on dry land is human flesh, or cows, sheep, pigs, sheep, pigs, and so on that we domesticate. That's the flesh. And all the rest, just 3%, for the wild beasts and for the uh, elephants and the, and the rest of it. Isn't that a tragedy? Uh, and we are destroying species, some which we really will depend on them. If we get rid of all the honeybees, how are we even going to have food? So there's lots of implications of this combination of human numbers plus what we do on a per capita basis. Okay, I said from the dawn of history to 1800, 1,000 million people. You may have seen this presentation before, but look at that. Every 14 or 12 years since 1974, there's been as many added to this world of ours as there were in 1800. Who could possibly think that that was sustainable? It just cannot go on. You want the real numbers? These are just up. This is to July this year. In round numbers, we're just coming up to 7,000 million in the world. Uh, there are 140 million births a year, 57 million deaths a year, and that's an increment of 83 million. And that figure, of course, gives the, uh, the figure I started with of, of one and a half million per week. Think of it, since last Thursday, one and a half million extra. One and a half Birmingham's extra, since a week ago. And one of the things that will answer, uh, I think, something that I know Fred Pierce often says, is this problem, which Lydia alluded to, of population momentum, demographic momentum. Even though it is true that the average family size in the world has come down very dramatically, the problem is, there's been such a boom of young people, such a bulge of young people in all these countries, including Uganda, where I went to school, that it means that one in two, essentially, are under the age of 15, haven't had any kids at all. So all of tomorrow's parents, who even with replacement fertility, which we're approaching, uh, uh, if they carry on with that, all of them, all of tomorrow's parents are alive today. So there's no debate. We've got to be, expect at least two or two and a half thousand million extra people before stabilization on the most optim optimistic scenario, the cause of population limit. An issue that uh, may come up later, especially when uh, Professor Coleman arrives, uh, arise, is, uh, is this one, a working age addict. The reason I show this particular slide is, again, to highlight that when people say the problem is solved because we've got the total fertility rate rates down to two and a half, where they used to be fine. I mean, that, that, that is a great achievement. It's wonderful that that has happened. But it's not the whole thing, because in these countries, including where I was born and brought up, we have much higher rates, around five. 
TFR is in shorthand, like the average family size. I mean, TFRs of all the blue countries there are far, far higher than the world. And there's so many of them in this country, they're such populous countries, that that's how we get the 83 million every year. I'm going to say the world's enough for everyone's need, but not enough for everyone's greed. Hands up those of you who've heard that saying before. Come on. It's a good saying, isn't it? But, and I totally agree with number two. There's no debate. We are greedy. I totally agree with what Ludi said again on that. We've got to be less greedy. We've got to be more equitable. But 